Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another micro struggle. Today we're going to talk about Marshallian demand, which is related to the utility maximization problem and also closely related to using the Lagrangian with the utility maximization problem. So what we're going to do today, we are going to first review the Lagrangian utility maximization problem. Feel free to review that full video if you need to. Then we'll talk about the concept of Marshallian demand. Then we will use the Lagrangian utility maximization problem to derive Marshallian demand. And then at the end, I am going to talk about a shortcut on how to quickly write down the Marshallian demand for a utility function that is of the form Cobb-Douglas. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's quickly review the Lagrangian utility maximization problem that we've done in a previous video. So we set up the Lagrangian. Here's our budget constraint. We went through the first order conditions and we kept solving until we got our optimal level of X2 and our optimal level of X1. And that was all nice and dandy. Now, what Marshallian demand is trying to do conceptually is we wanna know, okay, that's nice that we know what our optimal choice of X1 and X2 is given that budget. But what about for any prices, P1 and P2, what is our optimal choice of X1 and X2? What about any budget W? Again, what is our optimal choice of X1 and X2? So what exactly are we going to do? Well, it's going to be very simple. What we are looking for is we want to find some X1 star, and that's going to be a function of P1, P2, and our income. And we also want to find X2 star, and that's going to be a function of price one, the price of good two, and our income. So let's reset up this Lagrangian maximization problem with these new variables, where instead of putting the numbers for the budget and prices, we're just going to put in W and P1 and P2. So we are still maximizing our choice variables, our X1 and X2. We're trying to maximize a utility function, X1, X2, but now we're subject to P1, X1 plus P2, X2 is less than or equal to W where again, this is any price, this is any price, and this is any budget. So let's use that same utility function that we used before so that that's consistent. So let's just say, all right, well, the max of X1 and X2, we've got X1 to the one half, X2 to the one half, plus our Lagrangian multiplier times W minus P1 X1 minus P2 X2. Now I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly. If you need a refresher on how to solve this, go ahead and review that Lagrangian utility maximization problem. So we've got our first order conditions. Let's just take the first order condition of X1, which is just going to be X2 to the one half over two X1 to the one half equals lambda P1. And our first order condition for X2 is going to be X1 to the one half over two X2 to the one half is equal to lambda times P2. So I can just divide these first order conditions by each other. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get X2 over X1 is equal to P1 over P2, which means that I'm going to get X2 is equal to X1 times P1 over P2. Now, again, very similar to when we had numbers, we're just going to plug that into the budget constraint and see what happens. So we know that P1 X1 plus P2 X2 is equal to W because we are going to spend all our money at the grocery store. This means this is P1 X1 plus P2 times X1 times P1 over P2 is equal to W. These P2s will cancel, which is very nice. Now we're left with two P1 X1 is equal to W, which means that X1 is equal to W over two P1. Now we can put this back in for X2. We can get that X2 is equal to W over two P1 times P1 over P2. These P1s cancel, which is really nice. So we get X2 is equal to W over P2. Now we can put a little star here. We can put a little star here. Notice that now what we've got is we've got X1 just as a function of wealth and the price of good one. We've got X2 is a function of just wealth and price two. So you can plug in any prices, any budget, and you will know how much of X1 and X2 you want. So now let's talk about a shortcut for a Cobb-Douglas 
utility function in terms of finding its Marshallian demand. So I am going to represent to you that if you tell me that u of x1, x2 is equal to x1 to the alpha, x2 times the beta, where alpha and beta are just coefficients, I am going to tell you that I can look at that and say that x1 star of p1, p2, w is equal to alpha over alpha plus beta times w over p1, and x2 star of p1, p2, w is equal to beta over alpha plus beta times w over p2. And if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and go through it together using the Lagrangian utility maximization problem and show that this is true. So we are maximizing with respect to x1 and x2. We have x1 to the alpha, x2 to the beta, and that is plus lambda. Our budget constraint is the income minus p1 x1 minus p2 x2. Now we're ready to take first order conditions. So maybe I'll do this in blue. Here's our first order condition of x1. It's going to be x2 to the beta times alpha x1 to the alpha minus one. We know from before that's equal to lambda p1. Our first order condition of x2, it's gonna look very similar. We have x1 to the alpha. We have beta x2 to the beta minus one. That is equal to lambda p2. And just like before, we're gonna go ahead and divide these. It's not going to look as nice, but I'm gonna try and make it look as pretty as I can, and then we will simplify. So let's pull the alpha and the beta out out here. This is x2 beta. This is x1 to the alpha minus one. This is x1 to the alpha. This is x2 to the beta minus one and p1 over p2. Let's think about simplifying this left-hand side. We're gonna do that using our fun exponent rules. Let's put x1 on top and x2 on the bottom. So this is x1 to the alpha minus one minus alpha. This is x2 to the beta minus one minus beta. Well, that is just alpha over beta. This is x1 alpha minus one minus alpha is negative one x2 to the beta minus one minus beta is also minus one. Let's not forget about these prices over here. So this means this says that alpha over beta times x2 over x1 is equal to p1 over p2. So let's just say that x2 is equal to x1 times beta over alpha times p1 over p2. Okay, great. Let's put that back into our budget constraint, which in case you've forgotten is P1X1 plus P2X2 is equal to W. Now let's just plug in X2 and we'll see what happens. So this is P1X1 plus P2 times X1 times beta over alpha times P1 over P2 is equal to W. Okay, great. P2s are out. I can take out an X1 and a P1 of both sides. So this is P1 X1. This is one plus, this is beta over alpha. Simplify that fraction a little bit as well. So this is P1 X1. This is alpha plus beta over alpha is equal to W, which says that X1, now it's a star because we're in our first order condition is equal to W over P1 times alpha over alpha plus beta, which is already what I put up here. Let's think about X2. So X2 star, I'm gonna give myself a little more room. X2 star is just this X1 star that we've come up with times a couple extra fractions. So this is W over P1 times alpha over alpha plus beta times beta over alpha times P1 over P2. Cool, P1s also cancel. X2 star, that is W over P2 times alpha times beta for alpha times alpha plus beta. Well, we can take out an alpha. So X2 star is equal to W over P2 times beta over alpha plus beta, and we're done. So hopefully this was helpful and this shortcut proves useful in future utility maximization problems. If it was, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for a, another case of eConstructs.